Okay, folks, so in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how we create what's called a trend graph. So trend graphs are a simple type of line graph that we use when we have sets of data where we want to show a trend, where we want to show how the data is going up and down, usually over time, okay? So it's usually talking about um, comparing discrete numerical data values, all right? It's a fairly simple type of graph. Um, it's much more of a visual thing than anything else. We can't really get any meaningful numerical information from the graph itself. We can't calculate means, medians, modes, so measure centrality or measures of spread, such as your range or interquartile range. But we, it, it does. It, it's a good visual comparison. Okay, so. Above here, I've got my sets of data. So this is temperatures of soil temperatures from a weather uh, recording station in Ireland. And this was, uh, I think, the year 2019. So from January to December, okay? The values here are degrees uh, Celsius, okay? So the first thing that I want to do is, of course, draw my graph. So I have it roughly... I've got it roughly outlined here in pencil, but I'm going to go over it in a black pen. Obviously, you folks should never be doing this. Never, ever, ever use pen. I'm simply using pen because it shows up clearer and easier to read on these videos. But for you, in an exam, two things. Whenever you're drawing a graph, always use a ruler and always use a pencil. Okay? So, on the bottom are our categories, okay, our um, months. Okay, so how many boxes are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 29, 30. Okay, so we'll go every two boxes. So, January, Feb. March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. Now, our values, our lowest value is 5.3 degrees Celsius, and our highest value is 17.4. For the sake of making a nice, neat graph, I don't want to go from zero. I don't have space on this page if because I'm trying to fit it into the viewfinder of my camera, okay? So, how do I get around this? Well, this is a simple trick. Whenever you're doing a graph where you are skipping a section of the graph, okay? So, in other words, I want to basically skip from zero to five. So, what you do is I'm going to mark in five... And then you draw a little line here. What we're demonstrating with this line is that we're squishing our graph down to make space up here. All of our dad is going to be in this section. So this section of the graph is irrelevant. We're just squishing it down to make it fit in neater. Okay. So anyway, going to go five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And it's obviously degrees Celsius. All right, so how do you return to that? Very, very simple. You just get to your value. So I have 5.6 January. So here we go. January up, there's 5. There's 5.5. So 5.6 would be about here. And I draw a dot. If you want, you can draw a little circle around the dot. Okay? February. So it's 5.7. So it's ever so slightly higher up than the previous stop. Okay? March, 6.4. So 6.4 is going to be just below the halfway mark of 6 and 7. April, we jump up to 8.7. Now these are obviously average temperatures for the month. So that's 8.5, 8.6, 8.7. Okay? May. 12.4. So there's 12. May. By the way, getting a see through rule like this can make this a lot easier. So I go across to May and then I go across to 12. That's 0.4. That's a very simple trick 
to make sure you don't make a mistake when you're tracking these, okay? So now we've got June is 14.4, okay? So there's four, June, is, that's 14, 14.5, and 14.4, okay? July, 17.4, no surprises there. July normally being the hottest month of the year. You might get hotter days in August, but overall, July, you've got a higher average temperature. So that's 17 point four. So just below 17.5. And then August is 16. 16 on the dot. September is dropping right back down to 13.9. So there's 14. We're going to put a dot just below 14. 13.9, October, we're dropping down again, 9.2, there's 9, 9.5, so just below the middle of that, 9.2. November, getting colder again, 5.9, so we go to 6, and we put a dot just below the line, and then December, 5.3, so we're at 5, and there we go. Now... So here is my graph. Now this is something, by the way, trend graphs are one of these exceptions to the rule. Normally when I'm telling you folks to draw a graph, I'm telling you it's not joined the dots. That I want nice, smooth lines, okay? With a trend graph, you can join the dots. It's perfectly valid and fine. And that is exactly what I'm going to do right now. Okay? Yet again, what am I doing? I'm using a ruler. Use a ruler so your work does not look crap. Also, if you get into the habit of it, your graphs are just going to be more accurate. Not this example, but there are plenty of other examples where you draw a graph and then have to find answers from the graph. If you're drawing a straight line on a graph, always use a ruler. If it's a smooth line, like say a quadratic, then obviously you can't. But if I can use a ruler, I will always use a ruler. This is where having a pencil would be good. I'd slightly miss the mark there. But it's okay. Okay. And here we have, there's my trend graph. What does it show? It shows the change or trend of temperature across um, the 12 months of the year in this one place in Ireland. I think this is from Athen Roy. Okay, I can't genuinely remember. I think it was Athen Roy, one of the weather stations there. But what does it give us? It will give us not like there's not much by way of statistical information. For example, um, July had the highest value, but that's not a mode, that's a, just a high singular value. Okay, so don't be mistaken to think, oh, well, this is the mode. It's not, it's just the highest value that we got because there is no repetition here. Okay. But what it does give me is it shows me a good trend, okay? This is useful, as I said, if you're comparing data where you've seen changes over time, especially um, other areas we might see is production outputs and factories and the likes, but it's mostly just to show change, okay? And that's what it's for, unlike the other graphs that we're using to show things like the spread of your data, the averages, the centers of the data and so forth. This doesn't do that, but it clearly shows change. So there you go, trend graphs, nice and simple. I hope they're fairly straightforward. If you have any questions, put up some comments on Google Classroom or send me an email. Until then, okay, thanks and bye.